What's up guys, welcome to Wrench Capital Charts. Today we're taking a look at NVIDIA stock, ticker symbol NVDA, on a variety of time frames in anticipation of the next trading day. Wednesday, March 13th. All right, guys, quite the day here for NVIDIA stock. It's up 61 bucks and 39 cents a share. That's plus 7.16% in regular trading hours. It's up, you know, it's bouncing around here, but it's up about five points or so after hours. Listen, as always, whether it's in your favor or going against your current sentiment, see that volume? It's pretty low. So make sure we take that after hours with a grain of salt. However, if I'm a bull, it's of course the real price, right? There's nothing fake about the price, it's just easy to push around. So I'd prefer that it's up rather than flat or down after hours if I'm bullish. But the truth is, we have to take that with a grain of salt. So let's get started here today. First of all, of course, we know part of the reason, I'm sure, that a lot of these AI names are up today. Last night we got Oracle's earnings report, a little bit of a surprise upside report. You know, it's showing that the demand for AI is certainly spreading as if we didn't already know. But a lot of these AI stocks benefited from that here today once the regular trading hours hit and that big sample size of volume came in. We had a little bit of a fade and then I think dip buyers were, were uh, well rewarded here today. But let's get started with our daily ritual, our volume profile analysis here on, here on the five minute chart. There we go. Listen, I'm covering NVIDIA every single day. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. My goal is to hit 5,000 subs by market open Monday. That's my goal this week. Not going to happen without your guys' help. So I appreciate you uh, jumping aboard, subscribing to the channel. Let's get started. So what are we looking for? We're looking to try to pull out any bias that we possibly can here. And I think the five minutes, the best chart to do that on it, it's the most contextual. It gives us the most opportunity to look at like the little nuances of the market movement without getting too zoomed in where we don't get beefy enough volume candles to really understand what's happening on a, on a larger scale. So as always, what I'm looking for is changes in volume that are not contextual to what is typically expected that time of day, but they have to, of, of course, correlate with obvious moves in stock price, okay? So what I'm really looking at here today on NVIDIA is gonna be this big upside move here, obviously, and I'd like to compare that to the acceleration of that little bit of a fade that we saw after that move, and then I'm somewhat interested in that close, okay? Those three here today are what I'm primarily looking at, so let's take a look here from earlier in the day, heading into the close. So we'll start to the left here. Now, we look here, we get the bigger opening candle, which we expect. We start to get a little bit of a fade. Volume hangs on a little bit to varying, on varying candles, green and red, okay? But once this move begins, interestingly, we get accelerating volume to the upside in both cases. Now, listen, bulls, you guys know, if you've been watching the channel for any number of days now, and you know, I'll continue to say this as time goes on. I really, for this to be really definitive, I like to see three, maybe even four or more consecutive candles with consistently elevated volume. They don't have to be the same, right? But I wanna see them all consistently elevated. Whereas, you know, for example, to start the second acceleration of volume here, we had that green candle equaling the previous red candle. Okay, that red candle was kind of like a breather, and then we, we took off again. However, in this case, considering the acceleration and the candles compared to the surrounding candles in general, I'm going to give that move to the bulls. For me, that is definitive enough to say, okay, clearly at this period of time, we had a large sample size of bulls, really the larger sample size of the overall market, came in and said, yep, we think that NVIDIA belongs higher right now. For whatever reason, of course, we have the, the AI, you know, kind of market and general news today coming off of those Oracle earnings. So that's really interesting, but bulls, calm down. We still have two more, two more to look at here, so let's do that. If we move on to this middle of the day section, we got a little bit of an acceleration off of that, that slowdown slash fade off of the pump, okay? And we look here, and yeah, I mean, we saw, if this were the case... Like, let me just lay out my thought process. If you take out this green candle and then you had six consecutive candles, all, you know, this is clearly out of context if you had all six in a row, but if you had these candles back here falling back to like the level of these, that would be an obvious bearish win. 
But that's not really what we saw. We kind of saw an increase in volume at, while that move down accelerated, which is somewhat expected. Okay, we broke it up with a single green candle that was meeting the, the height of those red candles, essentially. But I think the part of this that really throws this off for me is these consecutive green candles that are essentially meeting just barely under all, th all six, I suppose, of those red candles. So while, you know, bears, is there something there? There's something there. But to me, it's not clearly as obvious or definitive as we saw this volume profile on that move upside. So, you know, that's what I'm going to say about that. There, there's an argument that there is something there. To me, it's one of the weaker profiles, and I'm not interested in weak. I'm interested in obvious. Now, moving on to this move into the close. First of all, clearly a strong close. Second of all, this candle immediately after the, the close. Listen, it's very common, very common, especially as of late, to see big five-minute volume bars on the immediate five-minute bar after the closing bell. What I have, I've said this before, what I think this is, is fund and institutional rebalancing. This candle happened to be green coming off of this very strong close, which by the way, I would say based on the simple fact that we had, what is that, five, if you, six if you include the, the after hours bar, consecutive increasing in volume green candles. And it's not like you had a consolidation move to go with that. You had a pretty strong upside move pumping into the close to go with that somewhat out of context, right? That's not any, any typical day's close. I, I have to give it to the bulls. So let's move on here to some important levels I'm going to be watching. By the way, don't forget to leave your vote in the comments section. Uh, Soundhound AI is yet again today the wildcard stock winner for good reason with the AI you know, news that we had today. It's moving. But just while you're listening, I promise I'll talk things through so you don't miss anything. Just head down to the comment section and comment the ticker you'd like to see me cover as tomorrow, Wednesday's, in play stock. Whichever ticker gets the most comments from today's entire batch of videos will be the winner for tomorrow, and I will cover it. Now, on to the 30-minute chart where we're looking at important psychological, self-fulfilling prophecy levels that I'm paying attention to and traders are going to be paying attention to here tomorrow. Okay, so this 30 minute should look familiar if you're uh, a consistent watcher of the channel. I, by the way, I appreciate it if you are. Last night we were talking a lot on the 30 minute chart about how we had given up now both the 200 period, the gray line, and the 50 period moving average. By the way, the only reason I care about those at all is because they're incredibly popular. I'm not interested in magical indicators. I could not care less. I'm interested in psychology and a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is what I believe all TA is, nothing more, nothing less. Um, and the truth is, those two are the most popular indicators we could possibly slap on a chart. So what I want to do is look at those on the most popular time frames, because those are going to be the most heavily viewed charts on the planet, on basically any stock with meaningful volume. And, you know, I mean, this was a really interesting 30-minute chart here today. So we reclaimed the 50 in pre-market. Take it with a grain of salt. Volume, I mean, it's almost non-existent. It's there, of course, but you can't even see it hardly, especially if you're on a phone. We open testing the 200 period. We reject, we test the 50 period, it's sloppy but it holds, and we rip upside through with three consecutive 30 minute chart green candles up through the 200 period. Granted we didn't quite get a full on retest, that's fine. The move upside was on very high volume and it was relatively strong, a big retest would have been a lot to ask. Can't have everything necessarily, right? At least not every day on every single chart, that would be a, a ridiculous thought process, a ridiculous ask. We pull back, and then we rip up into the close, okay? We reclaimed both in one day, and we discussed yesterday that that left us in an interesting opportunity with these two coming together and, you know, coming lower. And the bulls, you know, clearly took advantage of that opportunity here, at least specifically on the 30-minute. Now, tomorrow, understand that we now find ourselves approximately, what is that, 4.3%? Uh, from a downside test of the nearest now moving average, which is the 200 period here on the 30 minute chart in particular. I'll say two things, well maybe three things. Bulls, not that we would necessarily want to test because that is again a 4.5% loss if that were to occur. Um, if, you, if we were to see a test here from a bullish perspective, of course you're going to want to see, I don't, I don't mind what volume it makes the test on as long as we were to see a high volume bounce away. From that level as quickly as possible because that would likely include a downside break of 900 bucks a share 
which I'm not really uh, interested in, at least if I'm looking at this as a bull. So, bulls, I think best case scenario for you guys tomorrow is to see this 50 period on the 30 minute chart really rip upside. I mean, it's a lot to ask for, but I would love to see that 50 period get above 900 bucks a share. Again, it's a big ask. It would take a little bit of a move on higher volume likely to see that happen because that's a 20 point move, 19 point move in a single day. Okay, but that is the quickest moving moving average as far as the ones that we're looking at here uh, today across the three charts. You guys hear me say this a lot. Get some kind of psychological barrier up underneath the recent move to kind of add some psychological downside protection, right? As many as possible. The 30 minute, the four hour would be great. The daily would be great, though the four hour and the daily are increasingly slower. Okay, they're longer time frames. So the first one I'm typically looking at after we see a big move is the 50 period on the 30 minute chart. At least a psychological barrier is helpful so that the bears aren't looking at the stock and saying, this thing's floating on thin air. It has no business being up here, at least in the short term. The name of the game really in the short term here, like from a day-to-day -day perspective, is fill the enemy's mind with as much doubt as possible. Okay, and how do you add a little bit of a doubt, a little bit of doubt to a bear's mind? Well, you get an incredibly popular, incredibly heavily looked at moving average on a very popular time frame up underneath the move as soon as possible, then you have a psychological barrier starting to creep in to the bear's mind. Not that that will necessarily change their mind at all, right? They might just be bearish on the fundamentals, right? But the truth is, anyone who's paying attention to this chart, and believe me, most people are, they're going to at least consider that. Because almost everyone's using these two moving averages, which, by the way, again, is the only reason I'm looking at them at all. Now, bears, for you guys, you know, obviously you'd love to see a crack downside of both of these here tomorrow. Honestly, you're looking at a, a nearly 5% downside move, probably a 5% downside move when it's all said and done to get back below those. You're asking for another pretty volatile day. Okay, that would be best case scenario for you if you are a bear. But at the same time, you guys would love to see this 50 period flatten out, maybe even ahead of the 200 period, and not get anywhere near that psychological round number of 900 bucks a share to leave some, uh, some open air to the downside if you're a bear. All right, now let's move on here to the four hour chart and see if this thing is in play. Interestingly, we are pulling away here. We discussed yesterday how we tested it almost to a T and held it. Okay. And we discussed the importance of the four of the 50 period here on the four hour chart in uh, last night's video. Again, thank you to those of you guys who are, who are following the channel closely for NVIDIA. I, I greatly appreciate that. And we kind of did what I exactly discussed, what I thought might be the best case scenario. We ripped hard away from that level and put some distance between the stock price and the 50 period here on the four hour chart. It's a good thing to see. We did so on okay volume. Perhaps if you look at it compared to the last couple of weeks, maybe it was uh, a little bit above average. It was not tremendous volume by any means, but uh, I mean, you can't ask for, you know, last Friday's volume every day. So, I mean, that, that's, that's good. That's great. If I'm a bull, I'm looking at that 50 period on the four-hour chart and just saying, I don't want to see a retest. Okay, that would be a, a pretty big red day. What I do want to see, um, ideally, is just a curl upside, but understanding in, in the 50 period, the moving average, right? A curl upside in the moving average, understanding that it may take some time, but claiming as much ground as possible one day at a time. Bears, really simple for you guys. Obviously, you'd love to see a downside break of that, but... Um, I, I think more reasonably, more within like a standard deviation move, just a nice flattening out of that 50 period moving average um, can, can potentially buy some time, okay, if you're a bear. You don't want psychological barriers underneath the move if you're a bear, because again, if you're a bear, that can put some, uh, some doubt into some of your peers' heads, and you don't want that. You want your peers to be strong-minded. They support your position. Now, the most important chart of all, this one must be looked at. The daily. This paints the most clear picture, okay? And this is the most popular chart on the planet for NVIDIA stock. Exactly this chart right here, maybe minus the implied volatility chart down here. Um, but the volume, the 50 day, the 200 day, right? On the daily. The most obvious and uh, popular chart on the planet for NVIDIA stock. We have to look. And hey, by the way, if you guys find these videos valuable, I think you'll also find very valuable our private trading group. You can take a look at that at the link in the pinned comment. That's where all the real-time discussion goes on. I send out my, my personal intraday scalp setup alerts, every scalp setup that I'm looking at intraday. I also send out real-time in-play stock alerts for all membership options. I do human verified by me, by the way, 
unusual options activity. And then, of course, I'm working with the Platinum one-on-one group all day. Again, link in the pinned comment. Hope to see you join. So, here on the daily chart, guys, a couple things to look at. The moving averages are not, they're not in play. I mean, they're bu- <laughs> the 50 period, the 50 day, is below 700 bucks a share, and the 200 day is at 500 bucks a share. Meaningless right now, at least hopefully, right, essentially. And really, in all reality, they're too slow uh, moving to even start discussing yet. Now, look, are, are bulls starting to look at 1000 bucks a share? Of course they are. Everyone's thinking about 1000 bucks a share. But let me tighten things down and really get contextual about tomorrow, okay, Wednesday. I'm looking at a few things. First of all, from yesterday, a huge bounce off 850. It's beautiful. Okay. Today, reclaim of that whole number, 900 bucks a share. That is a psychological level and a nice reclaim. So the truth is, here's what I'm watching incredibly carefully here tomorrow. You know, obviously, 900 bucks a share is the level to watch. It's what we reclaimed today. We had a nice close, putting about 19, 20 points in between us and that level. Any retest at all of 900 bucks a share. I don't mind if it's a little sloppy. It's never going to be to the exact penny. Almost never. Okay, so I don't mind if it's a little sloppy, but I want to see a hard bounce on high volume if I'm a bull. Bears, exact opposite with a little added twist. High volume break downside through back into the eights. Average to lower volume retest. High volume rejection. That essentially in the very, very short term reclaims nine as a resistance. That is your goal tomorrow. Bulls. Hold 900 bucks a share. But really, I think the sights are, are kind of set on 950 tomorrow, aren't they? If we just take a quick rough look, you're looking at about a 3.4% upside move. Now, granted, the all-time high is 974. I'm more interested in the short term of, of 950. Get above 950, hold that as support, and then we could potentially look to use that as a level of strength, somewhat of a trampoline, right? To make a high volume move up toward 1,000, take out that all-time high in the meantime course doesn't all have to occur in one day but that's the the little bit longer thought process here as a bull now implied volatility very important okay it is back up we're now at the highest point in a couple of months here just understand that as implied actually let's zoom out a little bit and really take a look we're now at the highest point essentially looking back to uh, august of uh, 2023 just understand the higher iv goes in relation to your intended trade time frame the higher the risk of potential IV crush. Understand that, fit it into your risk analysis and decide, does this position still make sense? Okay, that's all you have to do. You know, all the Greeks are very important. It's not just, not just Delta and Theta, which I feel like a lot of people think it ends there. It doesn't. Don't overlook Vega. Also, don't overlook Gamma. But this guy here, Vega, the Greek that is uh, impacted by implied volatility, this is the culprit for many of you, and you might not even realize it, so... Make sure you study up on that. Now, my favorite part of every day, let's take a look. What was the bias in the options chain here today? This is all just from today, how traders positioned themselves heading into tomorrow. So we had 1.66 million total contracts traded here today. And look at this bias here. We had 1.0, well, essentially 1.1 million calls and 563,000 puts. That's a pretty large call side bias on the overall call per ratio. If we start breaking it down by a delta range, by average time frame of those, look at this. Every single delta range, okay, that's out of the money, at the money, and in the money. On average, it's going to be the short-term speculators, the more mid-term sentiment people, and I suppose algorithms, and the longer-term sentiment, okay, all of them leaning call side bias. But the one that I'm really interested in, being that this video is primarily geared toward tomorrow's trading day, Wednesday, is that 0 to 20. That is going to be the short-term speculators when we average it all out. Okay, We have about 357,000 calls in that range and about 273,000 puts. Not nearly as drastic as a call-side bias compared to the overall call put ratio, but still a call-side bias nonetheless. Listen, if you got value out of this video, please subscribe to the channel on your way out. Also, don't forget to comment your uh, ticker vote before you leave, and I'll see you in the next one.